Hi everyone. So my name is uh, my name is Ashley C. Harris, um, and in 2016, my dream since I was a child came true. Um, I had been an author and I was, have been putting out books for years, but I became in 2016 an international best-selling novel or an international best-selling author through my book Troll. Um, and I have prior to that I have nine other books out. So Troll made my tenth novel. And I have another novel coming out this May. So it's with this experience and the experience of two of my screenplays being adapted into independent feature films that I'd like to present my own journey in idea to book to publish. So an idea. Every book, and in fact, every object in this room that you see really started with an idea in someone's mind. My very first idea for the first book that I ended up getting published, titled Shock Me, it came to me in the form of a dream. I, at 13 years old, had a very vivid, exciting, and I'd almost say life-changing dream, only because I just couldn't shake it. Um, and the dream was about a character, that I had, a girl that I'd never met before, I just kind of dreamed her up who was older than me, but she had an incredible secret power. So I dreamed this dream when I was 13 years old, and I saw a whole adventure in this dream that she had in my head. And I woke up, I had to go to school, but I was so excited about what I had dreamed. So I went to school, and I quickly, while I was in class, during my free time, I just began taking notes on everything from my dream from what my characters looked like to what the main girl in uh, my dream's relationship was with everyone she had interacted with. And over the course of the next three months, I composed 40 short stories as a kid about this girl. And I composed um, short stories and I cut pictures out of magazine and I made storyboards of what <laughs> things that would be in her life. And I did comic book type sketches and I created just a short little series of my own, and then I put it in boxes and I put it away. So then, years later, when I was 18, I actually dreamt the same dream again. And I'd actually, even before that, dreamt this dream several times. So this character that I had um, created through the idea of a dream, she was literally haunting me. It's like every once in a while, I would have the same dream over and over. So at 18, as a senior in high school, I thought, I need to take all my short stories, make an outline, and really write um, a novel series about this character. And I did so. I actually wrote a five-part novel series. Oh. A five-part novel series. And what you guys are actually seeing is the finished product 10 years later, um, after it had become a, a best-selling series. But in order to get it to the best-selling story is really where my journey of trying to get a book published, well, a few novels published, began. So I was 18, and as I described, I had an idea. I made an outline, and whenever I make an outline for a book, I really think it's important that you want to hone and sharpen your outline to what moves the plot. You really want to take the reader on a journey, almost as if they're reading a book, but almost as if they're watching a movie. You want your story to move. So I honed an outline, I wrote my books, but then I, was, I needed to figure out how could I get these novels published. Now keep in mind, this is before an ebook was ever created. So we, you only had the old publishing novel when you came to getting a book out there. So the first thing I thought I need to do when I was 18 was I wanted to research the publishing industry, but it, was, um, it just seemed so difficult to try to get your work into an agent's hand and then an agent would then sell your novel. I was like, I need to find a mentor. I need to find someone that's actually published a book before through a company that could kind of just give me some advice. So in this, I just have the old publishing um, model here before the invention of an e-reader ebooks. So when I was 18, I had started my freshman year at FAU. And I ended up in a class with a woman that was a little bit older than me. She was going back for her third degree. And when we had introduced herself, she said she was an author. So I went home and I Googled her. And it turns out she had written 30 plus romance novels that had been published by 
Twyla Quinn, um, some of her young adult novels, Scholastics. She was very successful. And I was so, as a 18 year old, I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in a class with someone I want to be like. So I went to this woman and like I said, she was going back for her third degree and she was a mother and she was very busy. But I said, could you help me with the second step in the old publishing model process? I had finished a novel. I wanted to write a query letter to get it into an agent's hands. And she was very nice, but she said, you know, I only, she said, during lunch, I'll sit with you when I eat my lunch and I'll help you with a query letter. But she said after that, you know, she, you know, she was busy, which in life, our mentors can never do everything for you. They often have their own lives and they're accomplishing their own dreams. So keep in mind, a mentor is not a person who's going to accomplish your dream. Only you can do that with hard work. So she sat down and she wrote a query letter with me. And I sent that query letter out and I got lots of rejections, but I did end up getting feedback from agents um, from the same agency that had published huge, what I consider giants in the industry. Um, I just did two examples. I heard back from the agency that, um, well, from two agents actually in the agency that had represented the Twilight series, the Baltimore Stars. And though I didn't reach what I wanted with those agents, um, instead, you know, I just, I was 18, I wanted my, my novel to get published and I wanted it to be su successful. But it was through getting advice and mentorships with different people in the industry um, that two of my screenplays did end up getting adapted into independent feature films. And I ended up, I, you know, I, after college, I was getting, working on projects and getting credits in IMDb. And I was working on independent film sets and I was writing and it was very exciting, but I still hadn't accomplished what my original goal was, which was to get my books published. And it, they were young adult novels, so into young adult hands. So I had received a lot of rejections, but I always kept in mind that a lot of good authors, um, very successful authors had been rejected. So I just, I believed my dream was possible and I kept going. In 2010, everything changed. The Apple launched their iPad and e-readers started to come out. Now, 2010 seems like a long time ago, but I almost feel like now that I've almost, I've always had a, like an e-reader, even though I haven't. It's like um, our iPads and our technology and our phones have be become a normal part of everyday life. When um, the, I the invention of the iPad first came out, a lot of people in the industry, it was met with, it was met with a lot of opposition. They didn't know that eBooks would be popular. Would this really work for authors? A lot of people had it, that were at the top of the industry said, if your eBook was a, a success, that really didn't mean the same thing as a physical book being a success. But in 2012, eBooks started to gain traction. And authors that publishing companies were only doing ebook releases were becoming international bestsellers and selling millions of copies. So I want to say, even though the iPad came out in 2010, it wasn't until 2012 that it really started to gain traction. And people in the industry were like, oh, if you put your book in the, out as an ebook, it actually can be a big deal. In 2013, 30% of adults were reading on tablets. And then that number grew to 40% in 2014. And it varies now at 50 to 60%. Some, at some months they'll say it's lower. People prefer physical books. I still prefer both. I like to read an ebook, but also a physical book. There's like, there's nothing like it. So in 2013, so we'll go back here. In 2013, my parents and my sister came to me and they said, you know, you're reading ebooks, we're reading ebooks. You ought to put one of your novels out there and just see what happens. And at first I said I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to do the old publishing novel and just achieve what I had first set out to achieve. But they kept telling, you know, they kept encouraging me. So I said, well, if I'm going to do this as a professional and I was working behind the scenes in live television, I thought I want to do this to the most professional 
excellent degree that I could do it. If I was going to put a book out there, I wanted it to almost seem as if it was being put out there by a big publishing company. So for eight months, I actually I didn't put a book out right away. I just studied. I started looking at all books that had be, that were becoming bestselling, um, that were becoming successful. And I thought, how can I imitate this? So I just kept studying and studying the industry. And I decided, I started to, I decided that I was going to put my book out there, but I was going to reach out to some of the people behind the scenes that were helping books become successful. So I actually started emailing and Facebooking and trying to connect with mentors online that had helped other books become a success behind the scenes. And some of them actually, when they heard about the idea for my novel, they began partnering with me. And together, we made an outline or a plan. So just like I outlined my books, we actually made an outline of how we could put a book out there My like, for for them, I was the first independent author to be working with, but we wanted to do it in a big way. So after my first novel um, came out, titled Shock Me, that was based on that dream, that idea, it took about eight or nine months, but it finally hit the Amazon bestsellers list. And when it was first released, I wanted to give the novel an edge that made it different. And I was, you know, I was working in film and I was noticing all the trailers that for books that were coming out were just, you know, just words kind of slowly moving across the cover, which with music, which is so good. But I thought I'm going to create a more like movie kind of book trailer. Um, and I filmed things myself. I used stock footage. I cast actors and I put a trailer out there and USA Today ended up picking up my trailer and featuring it right as my novel was um, released. And this is usatoday.com. So, um, but that definitely gave my book a push. Um, some of those people I had partnered and net networked with, they um, helped that my book um, shocked me when it first came out. Uh, um, a really big um, reading club on Goodreads that had hundreds of members. They picked my novel to be one of their books of the month. So that definitely helped my novel to eventually become a success. And then I had seven other best-selling novels independently come out after that. Then in 2015, I finally got my first official book deal with the novel Troll. It's a young adult, a young adult novel. And I got my first book deal and I was so excited. And the following year, it became an international bestseller in 2016. It hit the number one spot in the Amazon Paranormal um, and Fantasy store, um, number one best-selling um, book. And then this is actually a snapshot from two days ago. Um, I saved it on my computer because I was so excited that Troll was actually next to Twilight and it was next to Shadowhunters. <laughs> I have considered these like industry giant books, especially Shadowhunters, have been out, I want to say, since I was 13. Even when you go to Barnes & Noble now, there's always a big display for Shadowhunters. So as dorky as this is, this is my passion, this is my industry, um, and I just continue to keep putting books out there and believe that you should never give up and that you should believe in your dreams. So idea to book to publish. This is just my outline, but I believe that you should believe in your idea, even if you think it seems silly. Hone your outline to what moves the story which is really important for what I write screenplays also. Finish your novel. I find so many creative people um, who, who come ask me, you know, what were my steps for how I got my book out there, but they, they haven't finished their books yet. They just, um, they have a lot of books that aren't done. Finishing your book is so important. You don't have a product until you've actually finished it. So even if you think what you're writing isn't good, get from the beginning to the end. Find an editor, which is something I didn't talk about, but I think it's very important to have outside people look at your work and help you edit it and hone it. Um, find mentors who have achieved what you desire and partner with them. That's so important. Um, we all work together better in groups. We all have different talents. So when, when you create a creative team, you will all bring different things to it. Um, make a goal for your book and yourself and make an outline that can, you can realistically achieve these goals. 
and then never give up because you never know what's going to happen. Um, this is my novel. It's coming out in May. I want to thank everybody for listening to this speech and have a wonderful day.